Hey folks, I want to give part two describing isomap, just on a couple more examples. Isomap is a nonlinear dimensionality reduction technique. So if you take a, um, a data set like this Swiss rule and you try to, let me, let me show you a picture of it. If you take a nonlinear data set like the Swiss rule and you use isomap, you can unroll it in a way that preserves the intrinsic or geodesic distances between data points. Okay, so this, this next example I want to talk about is a data set of images of handwritten digits. So each photo is, a, is very high dimensional, right? It lives in a very high dimensional space. But when I only write twos and they're lined up, you think of this as, as um, really only filling out a very low dimensional part of this high dimensional space. So, you know, the space of all images of twos is much lower dimensional than all possible ways I could assign black, white, and gray values to, to all of these pixels. So when I try to enroll this data set of twos as best as I can into the plane, this is the picture that I get. Every blue dot is a data point and the circled red dots are the ones that have corresponding images shown. Okay. So after the fact, you can try to interpret what is this map that I see. It's not the map of the US, even though it looks a little bit like it. Um, it's this map of twos. How you might try to interpret this map is that um, going from left to right, we look at how articulated is the bottom portion of the two. So the bottom of the bottom portions of these twos are quite flat. And then they get a little bit more, um, you know, loopy. And then over here, the bottom portions of these twos is, is quite loopy, I would say. So that's the right and the left axis. On the left, the bottom portions of the twos are not that loopy. Whereas on the right, they're more loopy. And you can also try to interpret the vertical axis in the same way. At the top of this map, you know, the top portions of the twos is, is quite short. You know, it's almost cut off early. Okay. And then the top portions start to get a little longer. And then near the bottom, the top portions of the twos get quite a bit longer. And maybe folks even add loops to the top portions of the twos which is not how I would recommend writing your twos, but that's just me. So let me clarify that these interpretations were not hard coded into the isomap algorithm. Isomap was just trying to solve an optimization problem and it did. But after the fact, you can try to interpret uh, these nice coordinates that isomap has seemed to find. It gives you a better understanding of your data. One other fun example, and this is from the isomap paper by Tenenbaum, De Silva, and Linkford, is of images of hands. So many photographs were taken of somebody's hands. So I think the wrist was held in place, or maybe the elbow, the forearm. But then you could move your hand, you know, and you, know, you could rotate at your wrist, you could move around your fingers. You know, the person didn't do everything, so they didn't cross their fingers or, or things like that. The data points, the photographs weren't taken in, in any order. It's not like this image was taken, then this image, then this image, then this image. Nor was it that this image was taken, then this image, then this, then this, then this. Okay. All these images were taken at random, but Isomap is still producing a coherent layout of this data set. The, um, Horizontal axis is measuring how rotated is the wrist. So on the right, the wrist is flat, whereas on the left, the wrist is rotated in this more, more vertical way. I shouldn't move my fingers, but on the left, the wrist is rotated, and then on the right, the wrist is flat. Now the vertical axis is some measure of how extended are your fingers. So at the top, the fingers are very extended, and then at the bottom, the fingers are retracted all the way into a fist. Okay. So once again, Isomap did not ask for these coordinates. It just looked at the data set and said, how can I organize 
this data set as best as possible according to a very, very rigorous optimization problem. But it does give you a nice interpretation of, of how you might think of a lower dimensional um, structure on the space of these quite particular images. Public questions? Um, if I could just ask about like kind of a general idea of how you could use this, um, is, is the idea that you have like a data set and you can create this ISO map. And then if you got a new data point, you could like put it on this coordinate plane and then measure like finger extension and wrist rotation, or do you somehow want to go the reverse direction? That's, that's one thing you could do for sure. I, I would put this in the, um, in the um, category of, of data visualization for the most part. Um, and I might say further exploratory data analysis. Okay. So we are working with data sets all the time, right? And a big problem is that uh, we have algorithms that work well and give high classification accuracy, like machine learning algorithms, like neural networks or convolutional neural net networks. But you can't really see why it's performing well, or you can't really see why it's performing poorly, nor can you identify when it's working well or poorly always. So I think of many of these nonlinear dimensionality reduction techniques as just a way to get started understanding your data, visualize your data at the very beginning before you then try a classification task. So maybe you do a dimensional reduction down into the plane and you see that you have just three clusters. So that's it. You know, so maybe your data points, which I'll draw in purple, maybe they just look like this, three clusters. This is telling me I could design design a um, you know machine learning algorithm that works on the entire data set, or maybe I want to have three different algorithms for these three different types of data points I see. Um, so that's one answer. You could think of dimensionality reduction as a way to visualize data, um, just to get a sense of it, which can. Um, prevent against some large errors that you might make later when you really misinterpret how to handle your data because you can't visualize it as, at all. Another answer would be that you might try to use these coordinates as features, okay? But I think that's more often done with linear dimensionality reduction techniques, like PCA features are frequently used, um, you know, in machine learning tasks. I don't think that's done as much in nonlinear dimensionality reduction. So I don't know if I gave the um, canonical or a, a very complete or good answer to your question, Sam, but that's that's my uh, first attempt. Other public questions? Thanks so much.